Hey guys and welcome back to another Unrelation 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a system in which blood will splatter on the wall after you shoot an enemy if they're close enough to that wall. So essentially when you shoot an enemy if they're close enough to a wall the blood will essentially fall from the enemy and splat onto the wall. Pretty simple so let me show you what I mean by that. So let me hit play, go over and if I were to shoot this enemy what's going to happen is the blood is then going to splat on the wall behind them as many times as I want is going to continue going there and I do have different materials for the decal but I've only got about five in here so there's not that much of a random chance for each one. If I get this one it's not close enough to the wall so it's not going to actually hit it. However one thing I have forgotten to do is destroy the actor afterwards so let me just do that and now this should be a little bit better so the bullet will always be destroyed so it won't bounce off hit me and then do it as you saw there. So again as you can see it's not close enough to the wall so nothing's happening. But with this one, it is like so. Now the blood kind of looks a little bit grey and not red, and I believe that's just something to do with the material that I'm using. And I will leave a link in the description down below to the material that I am using, so you can obviously mess about with it to get it looking better for you. But at the moment, I'm just showing you the functionality of getting this part of the code to work. I like can see this is what we made today, and obviously the blood will also despawn after a set amount of time as well, so it's not always going to stay there and lag out your game. So this is what we're going to make today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is obviously import our materials that we're going to use, which again is linked in the description down below, and you just add it to your project from the Epic Games launcher. Once you've done that, we're then going to open up our projectile BP or your bullet BP or whatever it is. Again, I'm using the first person example map, so for me that's going to be first person BP, blueprints, and first person projectile. You can see this is the default code we have in here. I'm going to delete it, but you can keep this as well. If you are keeping it, just delete this destroy actor and do the code after this and also connecting it into false as well. Again, I don't want this, so I'm going to delete it. Leaving the event hit though. Because what we're going to do is we're going to come off the event hit here and we're going to get a line trace by channel, like so. Because we want to draw a line trace from the enemy to the wall if there is a wall. So this line trace is going to check to see if there is a wall and if there is, where is that wall. So we want to draw the line from the enemy forward a bit like I say. So that's quite simple however obviously we need to find out the direction the bullet is traveling in so we know which direction to look for the wall in. So we're going to come out of the hit location and that's just simply going to go into start for the line trace because we're going to start drawing this line from the enemy AI and the end we want to find the rotation that the bullet is traveling in. So to do that we can find the rotation between the bullet and the AI. So I'm going to right click and find look at rotation the start is going to be get axe location, so the location of this bullet. And the target is going to be the hit location once again. So wherever the bullet hits, it's going to find the rotation between that and the bullet itself. So that should work great for us so far, like so. So now we've got the rotation between the bullet and the AI. So this is the direction that the bullet is traveling in. So what do we do with this? We'll come out the return value and get the forward vector, so we know which direction it is traveling in itself. So this is the rotation, now we need the forward facing rotation or the forward vector from that. And then after this we can get a vector multiplied by a float. And the reason we got the float is so that we can then increase the size of this. So essentially this is how far forward the line trace is going to go. So again increase this float if you want it to go further, decrease it if you don't want it to go as far. So I'm going to set it as 300 as that seems to be a good realistic value for me. But again, set this to be whatever you like and you may even want to increase or decrease this depending on what kind of bullet it is or what kind of speed it's going to do or anything along those lines. But again for me 300 is fine and then I'm going to come out to the hit location one final time and get a vector plus a vector connecting the bottom value of this addition into the multiplication of that vector times the float there and then connecting the addition return value into the end. And the reason we've got the addition there is just to keep this going in a straight line going forwards. So that is how we're going to draw this line trace here, very simply. It's going to go from the current location of the bullet to the direction that it is facing in, 300 units. So whichever direction it's traveling in, it will go that way. And just to test it, we can change draw debug type to for duration, compile, save, and then hit play to have a look at this. So if we go over to an AI, you see the line trace is going in the direction that we shot it in, perfectly like so. And you can see that's how far it's traveling as well. So that's going to be perfect. So I'm going to change that back to non, compile and save that. So now what we're going to do is see if this hits a wall 
or anything, we want to spawn a decal. So we can hold down B and left click to get a branch with the condition being the return value and the execution going in there. And this is the first part of that sentence I said of if it hits a wall or anything. So the return value is true if it hits something. And then the out hits, I'm going to break hit result like so, opening that up there like that. Because we want to mess about with the location and the normal. So off of true of this branch, I'm going to spawn decal at location like so. The decal size, I'm going to set to 50, 50, and 50. You can set this to whatever you like, but for the materials and the decals which I'm using, this size seems to be good. The location is going to simply just be the location of the break hit result. And the rotation, we want to change this depending on which side of the surface the bullet is hitting and the blood is going to land on. So we can do that dynamically. So we can come out of the normal of the break hit result and make rot from x, so make a rotation from the x axis. The return value can go into the rotation there and that will now work perfectly for us. I'm going to close that and connect these up again like so. So essentially now the rotation will always be correct no matter which side the bullet and the blood is landing on. And the lifespan here, we can change this to be how long we want the blood to last for before it despawns. So I'm going to set it to a solid 30 seconds, but you can set it to whatever you like. And in fact, actually just for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm going to set it to 10 so we don't have to wait around as long. But you can maybe set this to 60 seconds, 120 seconds for a minute or two minutes. Again, this is essentially how long the blood is going to last for before despawning. And obviously the more decals you have in the level, the laggier it's going to be. But with just a few here and there, it shouldn't affect your system at all. And for the decal material, what you can do is you can just put in a material in there straight away. However, I want to make this slightly random, so it's going to be a different material each time. So I'm going to come out of the decal material and get a select node. And this select is going to choose a different material dependent on a different value, i.e. this integer, or a boolean, or a byte, anything along those lines. I might just move that out a little bit more, just to make this look a bit better again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have six different options. I'm going to have option zero, option one, I'm going to add another four pins. So I've now got five options here, including option zero, so that's six options. So I'm then going to come out of the index at the bottom and get a random integer, like so. The max being how many different options we have. So again, I have six options because option zero is also one of them, so a max of six. So now every time it's going to spawn a decal, it's going to choose a random one of these dependent on this integer. So if this random integer is three, it will pick option two. If this random integer is five, it will pick option four and so on and so forth. So each time it's different. And obviously the more options you add, the less likely it is to repeat different materials each time. Again, this is what I'm going to have. So then I can just simply put in my different materials in here. So option zero, I'll have this bloodstain one. Option one, I'll have this bloodstain two and so on and so forth. Just doing this for as many different ones as you want and you have. Again, I'm using the mega scans assets from the Unreal Marketplace, which I'll leave a link to in the description down below. So now I've got all of my different materials in there, very simply what I can do is after the spawn decal at location, I can get a destroy actor, which is gonna destroy this bullet here. And that also wants to be connected into the false of this branch here. So even if the bullet doesn't hit a wall afterwards, it's still going to destroy the bullet because it has collided with something. So I'm gonna compile and save, and that should be the code done and working for us. It's very, very simple. So essentially when the bullet hits something, we're gonna continue that location traveling from where it hits, and if it hits a wall or something, it's then going to spawn a blood decal at the location and destroy the bullet. And if it doesn't hit a wall, it's not gonna do anything but just destroy the bullet. So we can hit play and test this out once again. Let's go over to this AI, shoot it, and you can see blood appeared on the wall behind it. And if we shoot this one, no blood is appearing, and we can do the same there and there, and it works perfectly. If we shoot that one, blood is going to appear there, and as you saw as well, the decal despawned. So this is working perfectly for us. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we want to do. we set up this blood decal system in which when we shoot an enemy AI, blood will appear on the wall behind them from whichever direction we shoot in and this looks absolutely great and again the more different decals you add the less likely it is to be repeats like that and they despawn afterwards and as well they have to be near a wall in order for it to actually spawn blood on the wall as well so thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one